and in this video we're looking at the ASME B30 standard for lifting and rigging. Specifically, chapter 26-5, which covers rigging blocks. First, materials. The block should permanently deform before losing the ability to support the load. This means that you should be able to notice that the block has been overloaded before it fails. The standard says that the side plates of the block should be either made from metal, wood, or a synthetic material. The sheaves and the load-bearing strap or hook should be made of metal as well. Rigging blocks should have a minimum safety factor of four. Next, rated loads. You always wanna make sure that you keep that max load inside the parameters set by the manufacturer. And keep in mind, that means the total load, not the single line load. That means if you have the block at the top of the tower and you're lifting something that weighs 1,000 pounds, there could be up to 2,000 pounds on the block total. Obviously, these concepts can get a little complicated and we're not gonna cover them completely in this video. For more info, check out a competent rigor course. Section 5.5 .5 covers proper identification. Each block has to have markings to show the manufacturer, the rated load, and the acceptable rope sizes. The block also has to be maintained by the user to ensure that these markings are legible through the life of the hardware. Section 5.7, training. Users have to be trained to select, inspect, and properly use the device. That means not just proper rigging techniques, but also the very standard we're talking about in this video. Section 5.8, inspection, repair, and removal. A qualified person must inspect each block to determine whether it's safe for use in the field. If it's not, it has to be removed from service. A visual inspection should be done each time the block is used. Permanently installed hardware should be periodically inspected as well. A written log isn't necessary for this type of inspection, but if the hardware does not pass, it must be removed from service. If they show any of the following during this inspection, they should be removed from the field and replaced. Missing or illegible identification, misalignment or wobble in the sheaves, excessive sheave groove corrugation or wear, loose or missing nuts, bolts, cotter pins, snap rings, or other fasteners or retaining devices, indications of heat damage or arc strikes, excessive pitting or corrosion, bent, cracked, twisted, distorted, or broken load-bearing components, excessive wear, nicks or gouges, a 10% reduction of the original dimensions at any point, excessive damage to the load-bearing threads, evidence of unauthorized welding or modifications, for hooks and shackles, removal criteria specified in those specific B30 standards, or any other condition including visible damage that causes any doubt as to the integrity of the block. Repairs or modifications to the block should be specified by the manufacturer or qualified person and the replacement hardware should meet or exceed the original manufacturer's specs. Typically, unless advised by the manufacturer, modifications are not recommended. Finally, section 5.9, operating practices. Obviously, first off, load ratings should not be exceeded. Also, make sure you keep clear of the block, the load lines, the load, or any other part of the system while you're using it, just to make sure nothing gets pinched, dropped, crushed, that kind of thing. This includes walking under or standing under a suspended load or just standing too close to the load line when not necessary. Also avoid sharp angles or edges that could damage the block and avoid rubbing the block up against abrasive surfaces. The load should be applied to the block in line with the sheave to avoid side loading the device. A swivel can help reduce this problem. Also make sure that your rope is seated directly in the middle of the sheave and do not shock load any blocks. So that quickly covers ASME B30 for rigging blocks. Obviously this is not a comprehensive training, before any lifting or rigging is done, a competent rigor course should be completed. 